So thank you for coming. So today's topic is price and volume analysis. So what the traders do, they just analyze the price and they forget about the volume. So we need to analyze the price along with the volume. So constant reminder, there are certain things we need to remind ourselves that don't forget this. When we are analyzing the chart, we are looking for the anomaly and the validation. So if something is matching or something is not matching, it's like Sherlock Holmes. So why did the dog, uh, you know, the dog did not bark? So that kind of thing. Again, I will also explain to you, which I learned recently about the matching and mismatching. So there are two kinds of personalities. Uh, people, some people, they like to match and some people, they like to mismatch or they notice the mismatch. So I'll explain to you the matching and mismatching. So, and then related to the validation and anomaly in the market. So putting all this together, so I created the slides uh, quickly today after taking a nap. So price volume analysis, the so volume relevancy. So we ask ourselves, is the volume relevant? And then we do the price volume analysis we, we, the answer is yes, the volume is relevant. And then we will go through on different charts and analyze the volume. So price and volume, why price and volume need to go hand in hand. So that's another thing. And then um, the, in the downtrend cycle, so if the, if the market is downtrending, then looking inside that cycle, what is happening? Where? trying to figure it out where the buyers were and where the sellers were or uh, in the downtrend. So there is something called insight, uh, analyzing the candle, let's say the candle, analyzing the candle from inside and analyzing the that bar from outside. So if we analyze the bar from outside, we may not get the current correct picture. So we need to dissect that candle or the bar from inside. So everything we dissecting, we're dissecting inside. The so outside may be looking, uh, be getting one answer, but when we go dig, dig deeper, we find a different answer. So dig deep inside, same way, same for uptrend cycle, inside and outside. So then we figure out what is revealed and what is hidden. So what was, what we were seeing on the screen, uh, if we were looking uh, just uh, one uh, time frame, so one time frame. So, um, so, so going into a multiple time frame, and as low as you can go, as low as the tick chart. So, what is revealed and what is hidden, and then the price and volume is an art or science. So, it's both. Uh, there are no perfections, so we need to remember there may be some data. Uh, uh, Sometimes you see the 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 uh, they they also tell you on the news on CNBC or Fox. Oh, there's this the market. Uh, print uh, had uh, some bad print. So we, when we are doing the price and volume analysis, we are relying on the data provided by our trading platform or the brokerage or whoever you rely. So there may be some inconsistency. There may be something wrong with the data. So are you sure the data you are uh, getting is perfect? So maybe you need to have multiple uh, platform, multiple sources for the data, multiple verification. So there needs to be consistency. So uh, th th you could read the chart incorrectly. So have whenever in doubt, verify, uh, be vigilant, be suspicious. So anomalies or validation. And then there is something called widespread and a narrow spread. So I'll explain the widespread and narrow spread. So um, widespread is means the, the candle is large. Narrow spread means the, the open and close price is narrow. So uh, when it's narrow, um, if you're just looking at the narrow price action and forget about the volume, then we may read it incorrectly. Or when we look at the widespread and think the bar is large, huge, the price moved and ignore the volume, we uh, we may read incorrectly. So, so looking for the anomaly and the validation. So we need to do that both. Now, so so the question is relevancy of volume. So why stop at price analysis? So if you if, if you don't have a way of analyzing the volume, then you're only analyzing the charts um, half, 50%. So you're missing out the other 50%. And then 
um, is the volume is still relevant today? So ask yourself, constantly remind, am I forgetting to evaluate the volume? Is it is still relevant? So answer is yes, it's, it's still relevant. And then for which market? So all all kinds of markets. So, so I don't know if you were trading some kind of market where the volume is not uh, relevant, but I'm trading equity, so the volume is relevant. Or the futures market or the option market, the volume is relevant. Sometimes the volume in the option market may not be relevant for you. Maybe you're reading ahead uh, by a stock chart and there's no volume in the option. So you expect, um, so that may not, that should not hinder you from maybe uh, putting on the trade in the option. There is no volume, but you're reading something or you have the news, so you expect that volume will come later. So it's 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 very um, subjective in some kind of market. Then also ask yourself, can the volume be applied to all time frames? So multiple time frames, you know, the, the, the five minute, the ten minute hourly, weekly, monthly, so all kinds of time, time frame. Then also, if you spot the wick um, in the candle, so I'm talking in reference to the candle, so the upper wick and the lower wick play, uh, is, they are very powerful, the wicks. So wick on any time frame, the candle of the wick, uh, the wick of the candle uh, on any time frame may be telling you the story. So pay attention to the wick, the upper wick and the lower wick. And sometimes there are multiple wicks at the same price level. So when the multiple wicks are forming at the at the at the same price level, and you're watching, uh, let's say you expect the wick to form at that price level, and you're you're already in profit, and you have a um, you have made your mind that you will uh, exit. If you see this phenomena occurring, upper week or lower week, so upper week for the long and uh, lower week for the short. So, so pay attention to the week, upper week and lower week. Now there is something, uh, so, so this is off the technical chart. Something I want to show you or, or uh, just uh, bring to your attention. So uh, then you maybe you, are, you can relate what I mean by anomaly and a validation. So there's something called matching versus mismatching. So you know, the phenomena is like this. There are people who match certain things and there are people born uh, always looking for mismatch. So they're always looking for mismatch in, in the things. When they go, uh, they, uh, they are reading something, they are mismatching or matching. When they attend a party, they are matching something or mismatching. So they are noticing something. They're matching the similarities or mismatching the dissimilarities. So ask yourself how your brain works with and compare data. Uh, do you, uh, how your brain uh, creates relationship between two pieces of data or three pieces of data or multiple pieces of data. So remind yourself that am I, am I, uh, uh, do I have the capability of creating a relationship between different uh, sets of data? Then ask another question, do you approach things seeking to match what you already know. So you may know, already know. And so the thing you know, and then you're looking for some kind of a confirmation. So there is a confirmation bias we have, and we just validating it and maybe missing out the other side of the picture. So, uh, so remind yourself, am I seeking to match what I already know? So for instance, you already know um, that, you know, Apple is really good and it's moving. So it's kind of uh, confirming your uh, likeness and you go along and you forget about uh, there are other things which are not matching for the uh, Apple trade. So, uh, so ask yourself, do you approach things seeking to mismatch? So mismatch or match. Now, these, these kind of personality matching or versus mismatching play a dominant role in your style of thinking and reasoning. So, so these are the points which I want to bring to you to consider while you are even when you are trading as um, just reading the chart for price and volume. So are you matching or mismatching? So are you, so when you're matching, you're searching for correlations. So uh, if Apple is moving up, there must be something good news. Or if you're mismatching, then you're searching for exceptions. So searching for exceptions, looking for something which tells you 
that this 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 is not right. What you're seeing it is uh, there are ten things uh, you're looking at, and then out of ten, eight are matching and two are mismatching. So those two mismatching, you're you is telling you that uh, no, I rather avoid. So um, this this concept is valid in your daily life in whatever you you're doing. So so pay attention to whether you are looking for correlations or looking for exceptions. Now another question. So just uh, uh, this example I read. Uh, when you walk into a room and there are four different pans of same colors, so four different pans of same colors, and you walk into a room, three are lined up, and one in a different position. So what do you what do you notice? Do you notice the the color of the pan the same, or do you notice that uh, one pan is not lined up? So where do you where where how your your brain uh, triggers that all pencils are red color or all pencils are blue color? Or do you see that uh, that one pencil is not lined up? Or when you enter in a in an office and one painting is not uh, straight, little you know, then you wonder, okay, this painting is the owner of the restaurant did not pay attention to this uh, little painting here. So pay attention and ask yourself how how you you process your brain. So this will help you also in your trading especially the anomaly and a validation of the price and volume. So uh, there's a concept called matching for sameness. So match current experience with your previous previous experience and looking for similarities and patterns. So you're looking for, are you looking for similarities and patterns or are you looking for something uh, different? So people, uh, who those who mismatch, they first noting, notice things that differ. So uh, when I explain to you about the price and volume, then uh, it will uh, this these concepts uh, with the terms of price and volume and anomaly and validation will help you understand this concept matching mismatching for differences. So first notice things that differ and notice the picture that is not hung straight. So when you walk into the into a room in someone's a home or in the office or restaurant and then you you see the pic picture is not hung straight. So you are mismatch. You you like to notice things which are mismatch. So so these are the kind of people who like re-engineering or innovation or new or different. So they 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 value these type of people value um, this mismatching. So now, so there are people who match and then mismatch. So first they match and then they mismatch. So first they sort for similarities and then they sort for differences. So look for all the things which are similar and then sort for differences and then decide uh, what you want to decide. So sort for similarities and then sort for differences. So if you are a matching personality, then you will sort for all the things which match similar, and then you will match for uh, sort for differences. And then you decide that uh, which one weighs. So it's all subjective right now. Now, if you are a mismatch and then match kind of person, then first you will mismatch and then match. So you will sort for all the differences. So all the points going against uh, that trait, and then you're looking for all the points which are favoring in the trade and then you would decide uh, the trade so pay attention to these anomalies and uh, validations so after understanding that matching and mismatching now let's go back to the price and volume analysis so price and volume analysis is universal it can be applied to stocks option forex futures whatever you're trading you are looking for uh, volume also so if you you don't want to be the alone loner so that's what it is. You don't want to be alone there um, uh, trying to, there is something called uh, the wisdom of crowd. So wisdom of crowd is, is more, uh, overall, the wisdom of crowd have the validity. So 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 uh, if, if, if you think that I rather trade only those options where the volume is, then, uh, there is a, and then uh, there's a lot of volume then and it's matching your what you are reading in the stock and the option when you look at the option volume also is there's a lot of volume and open interest and it's matching your uh, is confirming your validation about the stock move so volume plays role and multiple sources of uh, confirmation so an analysis of price along with volume is supreme way of trading so it's a supreme way of trading when analyze the price with the volume. So also 
remember, it's the volume, not only the price, it's the volume and the price which creates a strong support and resistance. So what is actually volume? So volume is, uh, let's say, number of shares, number of contracts. So, and who creates these volume? So me, you, and the big boys are creating the volume, not uh, we, we are retail, so we are just create. We are just a little drop in the ocean. It's the big boys who are creating the volume. So, if a certain stock uh, traded at a certain number of shares at let's say hundred dollars and crash, so there is a big volume. There is a big. There was a big seller uh, at a hundred price. So that price mean. Uh, have more meaning than if there was a less volume and the stock pulled back at 100. So there's 100, uh, the same price, but the volume is creating a different story about that price or resistance level. So high volume at the top of the trend. So if the if the if the trade is uh, if the trend is moving and there's a high volume at the end if, uh, at the top of the trend, maybe uh, it's not uh, that it 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 may not. Uh, the stock may not or that market may not for, move further that may be the volume climax or high volume at the bottom of the trend so high volume at the bottom of the trend that may be a volume climax meaning that there are no more sellers left so if there are no more sellers left how the price will go down so uh, eventually the something else will happen on the other side the buyers will come so the volume will pick up on the other side so pay attention to the volume and different day and the different ways of analyzing the volume so and volume can be analyzed on a different time print it can be as low as a tick chart and uh, if you divide in in a minute if you divide the 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 the, the day or month then you can analyze the volume on a month week day on a 195 minute chart. So there are 390 minutes. So you say, okay, I divide uh, in equal days. So you analyze the volume on a 195 minute chart. You can analyze on a 130 minute chart, 65 minute chart, 13 minute chart. So they are, e so they, I put it into equal time frame. So 13 multiplied by 5, 65, they are divisible. So you can do the 13 minute, 60 minute, whatever is your preference for multiple time frame. So you need to analyze the market in a multiple time frame not just one time frame like day. So analyze the volume on a multiple time frame and see what else is going on. And you can go as low as a tick chart. So pay attention to that. Also the volume and type of trading can be, the volume can be applied to any kind of trading, whether you are a scalper or day trader or swing trader, long-term trader, or whoever you are, the volume is playing role. So if you, uh, you know, if you're a long-term trader and you say, no, the volume doesn't matter, it matters. So ma volume matters in all kinds of trading. That's where the move is. So you're not the only one mm, buy a thousand shares and just sit a whole day and nothing is happening. Nobody is there to buy. Maybe there is a big boy come at 10,000 shares and he sells it. So, 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 so think about that. So, and all volume is relative. So volume is a powerful indicator and it's relative. So it's relative from one time frame to another time frame. So volume is relative. So volume was high during the first 30 minutes and it subsides. So, so the volume in 30 minutes went up and then it subsides. So and then continuously going down. So the volume in the first 30 minutes is irrelevant now. It needs to be stable or, or um, uh, increasing. If, if, if that's what you are looking for, uh, the volume is increasing, or you may be looking for the volume to subside. So, so you're looking for a decreasing volume pattern. So volume is all volume relative. And price without volume is meaningless. So price without volume, if you buy a, uh, if, if the stock is gapping up to, in the pre-market uh, five points and there is only 100 shares traded, so that volume is Ill, that that price gap five five point is irrelevant uh, because uh, this, that somebody just did something. You know, maybe the market maker he just raised the price five points and maybe bought by himself 100 100 shares. So that that price gap is irrelevant or price gap down is irrelevant. So pay attention to what is happening in the pre-market and aftermarket at what price so price without volume is meaningless so it's, it's useless and time is also the key component of price volume analysis 
So and the time means um, the, so when you're doing the relative volume analysis, you in the relative volume analysis, you're also there's a third dimension which is the price, uh, the time. So the time is also playing role. So if if you uh, so you can do that. I do this all day long. So the relative volume. So if during us uh, the whole day there are th if you divide the the regular session there are 390 minutes. So if you have the data, if you have a database, the history that uh, this particular stock trades this many shares on this time segment, the first 30 minutes. Then when you are trading, you can compare the time segment with the current time segment and then you uh, you say okay i have a historical data that uh, during the this 30 minute this during this time period between the, let's say from 6 45 a.m pacific to 7 15 uh, a.m pacific during this 30 minute time interval apple uh, trades 1 million shares and right now is trading uh, during this time segment is trading at 2 million shares so 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 this tells you something that is going on with the apple share if you're not that sophisticated at least you can this is a uh, so that requires a lot of uh, you know storage of uh, the previous history so the simple way you can do that you can divide that an uh, average volume average volume so based on the 10 day volume based on the 30 day volume you can store you can read the data for the volume for the last 30 days on average apple shares let's say trades 10 million and during the day so if you divide the, that 10 million shares divide by 390 minutes there are 390 minutes in a trading day so you come up with a certain number of shares now during the uh, 30 minute time segment you can compare that data what you have in your database that apple trades these many shares in in a whole day so uh, 50 minutes pass so divide that uh, shares number of shares it trades on a 30 day average divide by 390 minutes i come up with the 500 shares less a uh, five uh, sorry a uh, half a million shares so half a million shares trade in in um, let's say in 30 minute time period. So then you can compare right now it's trading uh, 600,000 shares or 700,000. So you, you, and then you are uh, reading that volume and then you are saying, uh, I need to rate that volume. So first of all, you're getting the percentage. So it's, it's trading, let's say 110% or 120% of the normal volume during that time segment. And then you can rate also. So if it's trading at 300%, you're rating it some something different than if it's trading at 80% of the normal volume. So, so try to rate and come up with the answer during the day, what is the volume? So time, not only, so price is important, volume is important, and then the time is also important. So price, volume, and time. So, so here's the example of a, a typical uh, bullish candle, which, we all know so in case you don't know I explain what is the bullish candle so it's white color so we gave the meaning white as a bullish candle you can in china they give the red color so for red color means it's bullish so for here uh, we give the meaning um, red as bearish so it depends what meaning you give to red color or blue color or green or purple or rainbow color, whatever. So it's your choice. But let's say we, we give the meaning white as a bullish color. So when you give the meaning uh, white, so you can, in your trading platform, you can color the, the candle any way you want. If you uh, want to color your bullish candle in red color or purple color, you can do that. But let's say we, we, are, we are normal uh, people here, in America and we trade, uh, we say, no, 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 don't things make things complicated, make it white color as a bullish candle. So if you see this, um, if, if, so if you see this um, uh, bullish uh, candle, so you're assuming, if you see this white candle, you immediately assume that this is bullish candle. So you assume, so uh, just make sure that your assumption is correct, that the white color you're seeing on the candle is, uh, on your trading platform or whoever's trading platform you're looking that person means that the price close price is higher than the open price so you you, you need to validate your assumption so so here is a weak 
um, here's the pr price which is closing close price and here's the open price this is called lower wick and this is high so there's a high here low here and this is the open and this is close and the difference between the open and close is the spread so it's called a spread so the distance between open and close so by putting this candle here i i i am drawing this picture so so you assuming ah oh, look at this uh, candle it must be very bullish the price may be like five points so you in your mind you're thinking oh, okay this is maybe but i i the, the the spread could be only 10 cents it could be open at um 10 dollars and close at 10 dollars and 10 cents and this high wick is like um 10 12 and lower is like 9.95 so you see the large if you see the larger candle or the white candle just don't assume that is a bullish candle just don't assume we see uh, the big candle is a white candle and is a big candle and there's a big spread so don't assume uh, like that so but for our our example uh, it's called a spread so think about that it's a spread and it's bullish candle so during the market the market is moving like this so, so just a typical market open price here and it goes and make a low some low so it opened at 100 it went to 98 99 and then it made a um, went up and then it closed at certain price so this is the high of the session here this is the close and this is the low of the session open price so this this is the spread this is a spread and it's positive spread because the open is here and close is here so that is uh, is uh, higher so it's called positive um, price action so this is this positive sine wave so this is the sine wave so i'm trying to understand explain to you so now look at this uh, cycle so this is a downtrend cycle and then we need to uh, look at inside and outside so downtrend cycle so if if we draw a downtrend cycle in this fashion we see the market open here and the selling pressure build up it it went 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 down 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 and it created a low and then uh, selling pressure exhausted some kind of a big is formed and then the market moved up buying pressure and the market closed at the open so net change is zero so it happens a lot of time during the day the market open a certain price and then close at the same price so 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 what happened there was a selling pressure on on this side and then there was a buying pressure on this side so but if you so there was a buyer and seller they fought all day long and and at the end uh, the buyers they just brought the price back to uh, the close but back, back to the open so net change um, is zero so if you're looking at this as a day chart so if, if this is a day chart you're seeing this 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 chart uh, it doesn't tell you all it tells is on on your day chart you will see a little candle very tiny candle a little bar um, which you may not pay attention to but if you dig deep then you say oh my goodness the stock opened at 100 and it went to 90 and then it uh, traveled all the way and it closed to 100. so the spread the, the 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 move was 10 points on the downside and then the 10 point to the upside so now you ask yourself where was the volume so in order to look at the day chart you have to dissect it into intraday time frame so you have to look at the intraday time frame so you dissect it into four hour chart two hour chart three whatever I'll go all the way and then you you analyze the volume and say okay the volume was uh, high or low so maybe the volume was higher at the uh, at the on the buying side after the low was made so you're looking at the int interval so if the stock has fallen from 100 to 90 and then it recovered all the way to 100 so they imagine all the buying power it took the pressure how many seller buyers have to come in to support this 90 dollar price and make it move back to where it was so there was some lot of lot of um, forces so a lot of forces came to defend this uh, 90 dollar price so so on the right hand side is the buying pressure and is the, on the uh, left hand side is the selling pressure now so so you can dissect this candle further uh, 
into the time segment and then you say okay in this time interval this is where most of the time during this time period let's say from 10 a.m to 10 15 or 10 30 most of the time uh, the the stock uh, was trading at this price so this is the time and uh, most of the volume was uh, between 10 and 10 15 so volume profile so something called volume profile so between 10 and 10 15 the most of the volume was at let's say 95 dollars so most of the volume on the buying side was at 95 dollars and uh, less volume came uh, later so now you know that if you dissect it you know that not only this the sentiment has changed to the bullish side open and low and that hundred dollar high and low is 90 and the close is back to 100 if you dissect it in between and then you find that most of the time the stock uh struggle between 90 and 9, 95 and 97 let's say 95 and 97 and then it took off and closed at 100. so when you do this analysis then you know you come to conclusion uh, or 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 uh, you know your analysis that on the way down with if, if the stock moves down again from 100 down then 95 97 is the territory where it should defend uh, the, uh, the buyers will come in because this it the 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 uh, the stock took a lot of time in between this zone between 95 and 97 uh, to break through and then it it broke through so if it if it took um, a lot of pressure there was a lot of volume a lot of activity a lot of time is spent the more time it the market is spent in a certain time zone the more valid it becomes because uh, you know the it's like a imagine a battlefield a lot of soldiers are getting killed in this 95 97 zone uh trying to um, um break through above 97 so 95 97 95 97 and then it breaks through so so uh, on the way down again let's say it's uh, next day the market starts to uh, come down 95 97 is the price point you're looking for that it will uh, it will hold so that's your another buying opportunity if you missed it and the last one would be the low here so if this low is broken then a new cycle has started so 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 what we are seeing is this is a downward cycle and we are we are dissecting it into a different time frame and then and uh, from the low of the day to the high of the day and then dissecting where the most of the volume was which which price zone so if you don't do that if you look only on the uh, day chart then uh, you're missing out all this analysis so what is revealed by uh, explaining to you what is revealed so complete reversal in market sentiment Selling pressure overwhelmed by buying pressure. Sentiment on the close of the bar is bullish. So when this kind of a scenario happened, the sentiment has changed because there are a lot of buyers who came in and supported the price and they fought between 95, 97, and then they closed it. So, so I give you example of Apple. So Apple has broken 175 and it's going up. So the next um, um, level for apple which apple need to cross is 180 181 so once it cross 180 81 then it, it will rocket uh, to the 193 194 so if you look back on the july <clears throat> july period 193 194 was uh, the was the period the the uh, the time the price where a uh, lot of action happened between 193 94 and, and recently uh, when the market the apple tank it tank at 180 level so so on the way up 180 181 is very strong so it will um, stop there so it reach almost 180 level reach so uh, i close the apple long so 179 50 is 179 60 so it's very close 180 181 so the next next level above 181 plus minus 40 50 cents the apple should move towards 193 and then after it conquers 193 194 then it will go um i don't know maybe it it takes out all time i i I'm, i don't know so sentiment on the close of the bar is bullish the picture is not complete if we look at that picture if we don't dissect it it's not complete so volume is missing the volume was missing on this charts right so you don't uh, you don't see anything it's just, so you have to dissect go the time levels and the lower wick so so if if this is the picture you need to look at the lower wick where the wick was formed 
and the spread is zero. So the spread is zero. So the spread is zero. If you're just looking for the spread, uh, net chain zero, and you don't look further. So on your, let's say on your trading platform, you see a stock, Apple and net chain zero. So if you just rely on net chain zero, you missed out all the other analysis, what I just described, uh, that it was a bullish uh, close, even though it's net chain zero or net chain uh, 10 cents a negative or 50 cent negative is still um, bullish. So volume inside of the candle unknown and volume outside of the candle unknown. So here, if you if you don't pay attention to the volume outside inside is unknown. So you have to go inside and uh, first outside. So look at the volume, look at the intraday chart, and then see where the most of the time which price zone uh, the stock spend most of the day, and where which time which uh, price zone, not only the price zone, and then the what. Oh, at what time? So um, then your analysis is complete and you know uh, that this is what's happened. So remembering, so remembering the price points uh, when you're trading. So remember the previous point. So I gave you the example. So I, I, I try to remember. I say, okay, Apple previously, you know, 180, 181 is traveling now before that this was 193 94 so all that price point and at the bottom is 170 171 so all this you have to remember it so picture and relationship so big picture volume and price relationship detailed picture is volume price and time all three together so so dissect the candle open it just like you know, when I was in uh, fourth or fifth grade, they told me, okay, today we will dissect the frog. So I, oh, no. no. I said, uh, so I was told, go to this well and pick up a frog, bring, bring your frog. So we we went, uh, went to the well, picked up a frog and put the frog on the table and then a dissect. So that was my first and last dissection. So it's like dissecting a frog so it's the same way you dissect it, you cut it open. So you cut it open and see inside. So dissect the frog. So in so same situation. So this is an uptrend cycle. So uptrend cycle inside and outside. So the market may open at this level and there's a buying pressure, a high buying pressure, the stock moving up and up and up and up and it makes a high and then it collapses and then it goes and close at the same price that it opened. So there's a there, so what happened? If you look at the net chain, you don't see anything, but you have to dissect it. That okay, I need to see intraday level at the hourly chart, 30 minute chart, what happened and where most of the time the stock um, um, traded. Maybe you go at as low as the tick chart and see where all the transactions happen at what price level. So then you will know that on the way up, so so if if this, so I'm just uh, uh, coming up with the price again. So let's say the open is 100 and it closed, at the high was 105 and then the close is 100. In between, in be so uh, in between uh, the stock uh, on the way down, it spent a lot of time and 102 and 104 level in between here, let's say. So 102 and 104 and then it closed back to 100. So, if it is, if a lot of uh, fight happened, which is a uh, lot of fight means a lot of volume, and there was a lot of time spent in defending one or two, one or three on the way down, then so a lot of buyers are caught here in one or two, one or three levels. So on the way back up, when the market is start to rise, first it will meet uh, all these buyers here. They, they are all sitting too close at break even. Maybe they will even close at a lower than what you, what you read it. But, so if you if you if you reading one or two one or three on the way down, uh, where all the transaction happen, so that's the first. Um, you, you're assuming okay. I know the one or two one or three. Lot of uh, buyers. Uh, they 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 fought and they they tried to support, but eventually the sellers came and they. Uh, they were able to get hold of the market and they close it back to 100. So, so we look at that price zone, 100 and 203, and say, okay, on the way back up, this is the price zone I need to pay attention to. But think, think from this, who, who, who says 
that these buyers who bought at 100 and 200 trees, they did not average down at a lower price. So they may have averaged down at the lower price and brought their average to 101 or 102, something like that. So on the way up, uh, they may start selling at uh, not at 103, maybe at 101. So, but eventually you know that after on the way up, when the 103 is crossed to the outside, so all these buyers who bought um, and, and they sold, so they're, they're on the way up, there will be buyers who will sell their position at break even. And then when the market uh, eventually takes off, so all the buyers who are sellers on the way up, uh, all the buyers, they have converted into sellers. So, and on the way up, the buyers are buying. So they take all the inventory from the, these buyers who are sellers now, and then they buy more. So when they buy more, the stock takes off. And then these buyers who sold at break even, saying, okay, goodness, thank goodness, I sold at break even. When they see the market start to rocket upward, they will, they will uh, buy back their position. And then there is a third party, which is the uh, uh, sitting on the sideline, they want to see uh, who wins. So who wins? So there's a psychology. So this is where the volume, this is where the support and resistance gets created. So who is winning after the, the fight is gone, uh, happening here? So when the, if, if, you, if they realize that the buyers are winning, they have taken out all the previous buyers who are now sellers and now they are buyers, so that they will join. So that's why the stock, uh, um takes off after crossing a certain resistance so this is called breakout reversal so i explained to you the phenomenon of breakout reversal so break the the, the market close at the low at the open close and then when it reverses to the upside it meets some resistance at the big midpoint somewhere where the majority of the fight happened not at here this is not the resistance maybe we we read the resistance incorrect we think okay the high is the resistance high the resistance may be in between somewhere here in the middle so we need to pay attention to the resistance so if we if we are thinking the high is the resistance we are too late from 100 to 110 and we decide to buy it 110 and above we are too late we need to know on the way down where the battle was fought where in between where and then when that is taken on then we 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 go long so dissecting the candle like a frog in between uh, pays attention uh, pays a dividend so this is the way so if we look at the bar of a downtrend to uptrend so this bar this one no just a second downtrend to uptrend so so downtrend to uptrend this one this one downtrend to uptrend so this is a downtrend to uptrend this is uh, i created um in terms of just a line chart so just to trying to explain to you now if you put it in the candle form or a bar it will look something like this like a t so in uh, uh, um, hammer or like a T. So here it is, the market open at this price, selling pressure. It creates a, a low and then it rises upward and buying pressure. So at the close, um, uh, it's, it closes at the open. So this is um, the hammer. So now the hammer is a powerful candle, but hammer depends on where it's forming at what price level. So just relying on a hammer, if you go on and say, okay, um, I read somewhere hammer is a is a powerful candle, uh, it shows reversal, then you may be wrong because it depends uh, on a lot of factors. So as explained, the, the volume on what side of the hammer was the more volume. Uh, this low created what else happened previously. So look on the left side of this chart and see if the, previously the market has turned around at the same low. If, if the market has is, is, is not moved on the same low on the left side, then it may not be as powerful as previously it turned around three times. That's why it validates. So this candle validates the previous price action. So previous price action was the same at the same price level. The market has done the turnaround. So at the, at the same time, it happened again and the market closed at the high and the buying pressure was higher. So you know now that this candle is telling you something. It's, it's giving you some kind of a signal to go long. 
And then when you dissect it in the middle of this candle, the middle of the candle, when you dissect, then you know where where the most of the action happened on the downside and on the on the upside, where the market uh, um, like uh, rested. So with price zone, the market rested. So if you can, if you know that, that if you figure it out that this price level, the market rested most of the time, most of the day they fought at this battle. So when you go long on this hammer, on the way down, if the market is tanking again, then on the way down, you you um, stay like uh, calm. So you stay calm that, okay, I know uh, it's coming down to this zone. So you can adopt a, a proper strategy and just don't close the trade uh, willy-nilly. So you are already prepared. So you're already prepared, you know your zone. And if it goes below low, then you may have a, a stop loss and you are stopped out. So that's one thing. Now, if you spot this, this candle, so this is uh, one signal, let's say you say, okay, this is my buy signal, but I am, and you, you may have gone long in, in the middle somewhere. And then uh, further confirmation will come what happens next day or two days or three days later, what else has happened. So there are many scenarios after this. So the uh, one scenario could be the market just start to tank and goes into this zone somewhere in the middle, rest, and then takes off back, um, back up. So it does that intraday level. Uh, this phenomena happens uh, all day long in all these, uh, um, I call them horsemen. So you start with Apple, and you end with Tesla. So in between Apple and Tesla, there are about 22, 23 stocks which uh, do that. They do all day long. So Apple, Baba, Baidu, Amazon, and Adobe, Tesla, Nvidia, uh, uh, Team, Crowd, Cyber, all these big, uh, big, uh, you know, big, big boys. They are all all day long there. If you dissect at a lower level chart you see this phenomena all day long is happening. All day long in these uh, 22, 23 stocks, this is what's happening in, um, you know, sometimes it's a Meta, sometimes it's a Tesla, today it was Tesla, Meta, uh, Amazon moving, Apple moving, and you know, all, all of them, almost all of them are moving to to the upside. So so if you're trading it in between, if, it, if, you, if, you, if you know your zone, and it holds and then it starts to reverse you can make you can you can um, create your position so 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 but if but if it's a day chart let's say you're, you're a swing trader if it's a day chart and you're looking at this candle so next day when the stock gaps up above the ha uh, this hammer above let's say above the close then that's your another confirmation if it gaps down then Gap down and this 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 zone is trading. So this is the buyer zone. So somewhere here is trading here in between in the middle of the candle. So you are prepared that you know that okay this is still valid. So I'm not uh, going to freak out. Now on the other side, so this chart, this chart uptrend cycle in I if I create the uptrend cycle into the bar or the candle, then it will look something like this. So it's inverse of the hammer candle. So this is like a gravestone. So gravestone means that all, all the, the, the traders, they went long, they are all buried in that graveyard. So this happens sometimes during the day, you, you, um, you go, you, this is the way the price open here and it goes up buying 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 everything is looking good and then uh, you go take your dog for a walk when you come back you see the market close at the same price level then you wonder what happened so all the the buyers these buyers here they are all buried somewhere here they are all buried here they are all losing those who bought at the open they are losing and then in the middle they bought they are losing and then in suddenly those who bought at the high of the day they are all losing they are all buried in this time in this in this zone in this big zone so this becomes a very strong resistance so so th this whole zone is a recent zone so now you know this is a whole zone is a recent zone but as a, as a trader, you now you say, okay, in between, where is the real zone where most of the fighting happened when the stock uh, came down? So as it was coming down, there must be some defense 
uh, of uh, buyers, some buyers, they were buying the uh, dip. So they're buying the dip. So maybe, uh, so this is 100, this is 106, but most of the fighting on the way down have been at 102 and 104 zone. So in between 102, 104 zone. So, but the market closed at 100 and you're losing money. Let's say you went long and you're losing, or you had a position and you did not close the position. So you gave back all the profit for that day. So if next day, now the next day, the market should not gap down here in this zone. If the market gaps down below this close, then it's, uh, you wait for 10, 15 minutes, and then you decide whether it's going to recover and come back above or it's not gonna come back. So you either, you need to close that position. But let's say the next day, the market opens at, the, at this zone, above this zone, so it's positive. So now you know that, okay, the market has opened here, first of all, so I don't need to freak out too close. So you're staying calm. And then on the way up, so you if, if you dissected your candle and you say, okay, on the way up, I know 102, 103 is, is uh, the line in the sand it needs to cross. So again, there will be a fighting between the buyers and sellers because there are buyers here, so they will sell on the way up at the break even, and then the market will take off. So. So for Apple is 180. So Apple for Apple is right now 179.50 right now. Today's whatever is the high 179.60 all the way to 180.150. So this is a very strong resistance zone for Apple. So if it crosses above 180.150, then Apple should take off. So the same phenomena. So now, so the so price and volume analysis is it an art or science? So think about it. You're dissecting a frog, so you may dissect the frog and cut his hands off or whatever, or you may not even analyze it properly. So think about it as an art or science. So price and volume analysis is an art and volume analysis is subjective. So market does the mopping. So market does the mopping and you need to be patient. So market shakes off weak hands. So market will shake off weak hands in between here somewhere. It, uh, the market can shake off by by uh, opening a little lower and then moves up. So they 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 they, uh, they close their position. They all their stops are set here and then it goes. So the big the, the sharp traders they all know uh, all the stops are here or they are already prepared to come and defend uh, the position. So you think okay this is my, uh, it closed at hundred. I I set my stop at ninety nine fifty, and if ninety nine fifty I'm out and then it goes to ninety nine forty and then it takes off. And then it meets some some uh, some resistance in between here, and then it mm, does the fighting, and then it absorbs all the selling, and then it takes off. So market shakes all the weak hands. So when, when volume is detected, be patient. So so be patient and stock the trade. So so be patient and stock the trade. So create a, some kind of a phenomena or some kind of a process of stocking the trade because stocking the trade is a form of remind yourself that is stocking the trade is a form of risk control. And if I stock it correctly, not only I'm reducing my, my, uh, my risk in that trade, but I'm increasing the number of shares I can buy because I'm buying it at very, uh, at a price point where I can increase the number of shares or increase the number of contracts because my stop is tighter. So if you can make the stop as tight as possible, provided you don't get stopped out, then you can afford to buy more shares, more contracts, because you have, if you are wrong, you're wrong right away. You know the price where you're wrong. So, so you can increase the number of shares or the number of contracts. And then when you turn it into a profit, then you, um, it's more profit. So the profit can go up by 50% just by reminding yourself that you need to stock the trade and read the trade. And also learn to draw the support and resistance lines on your chart constantly. You need to have a trend line. The trend lines are the, the, the lines are upward sloping or downward sloping, but not only that, trend line break, but the, the, the zone, the channel, the horizontal line. So combine the trend line, the upward sloping and downward sloping along with the horizontal support and resistance because the trend line is, one, is not a complete, the trend line is breaking the trend, but the actual support and resistance is the horizontal. So learn to draw the proper horizontal support zone. And then if the trend line is matching with your channel of support and resistance zone, then uh, is, is, is even more powerful. And then evaluate the whole landscape. Just don't 
pay attention to one candle or or just little time frame don't do that if you will uh, go like uh, i give you the example so back home or india and pakistan i remember whenever i travel i try to or even in the far east or even here in america if i'm traveling in a bus i try to sit in the front next to the bus driver so i can have some kind of conversation and then when you see his 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 uh, glass is so wide so you have a scenery right in front of you instead of you sitting in the middle somewhere so so evaluate the whole landscape and how you get the front row seat by knowing when to stand in the line go two hours early and stand in the line be the first to do your best to sit next to the bus driver so you can learn something while you're traveling and have a panoramic view so same way have a panoramic view of your trade chart so invest something like a curve monitor 49 inch i have a curve monitor 49 inch i have you know, eight nine 27 inch monitor so uh, buy some landscape and and put the charts on a on a lower level time frame clear view and then try to remind that you're trying to read is the train is stopping or more showers to come so remind yourself okay it's time is raining and um, uh, just like you know when you're planning your trip if the rain is stopping or more showers to come so same way in uh, in trading is like raining more more shower coming or rain is stopping and the market is about to take off so perfection there's no perfection so imagine the data may be imperfect and you're relying on the data on the take and on the on the bar so ask yourself are, are you looking at the right data to so think about that are you 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 are relying on your broker data and then that may not be correct you're seeing something is all illusion so you're seeing something you're seeing a big order and it's all illusion. It can be canceled right away. Fake bids, cancel order, uh, data discrepancy, so dark pools, V-shaped rallies, all this during the day is happening. And and and, um, and um, you're just relying on your little phone on your, you know, and on a Robin Hood. So you say, okay, I'm gonna make money by opening an account on a Robin Hood and here's my phone, I can make some money. So no, it's very hard. So, so think about it, data complexity and consistency. So data feeds are complex, data must be reliable. So ask yourself, is, am, I, am I getting the proper data? Am I reading the proper volume? Is, uh, and am I, am I dissecting the volume correctly? Volume is all relative. You're judging volume from one bar to another bar. So are you paying attention to the re relative volume? Are you paying attention to the time of the day? Maybe the, the whole game is over by nine o'clock Pacific time. And after nine o'clock, there's nothing happening. You close your position and you are positive. And then uh, the greed sets in. And then you try to open another position and you give back all the profit. So uh, look at the time of the day, where the most of the action, maybe by nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. Sometimes the action goes on till the end of the day. So uh, be patient. If you are at home, you just stay at home and watch the charts. If you are, if you have closed the position and you're sitting at home, be be uh, relaxed and watch the charts. Dissect your um, time, uh, the volume based on the time and uh, the the bar based on the time and volume. Pay attention to what's going on. Do the debriefing. Get ready for the next day. Note down all the prices. Try to remember the prices. So so see where the the market closed write down all your mistakes in the journal have a notebook and say okay today i closed this early or i closed this late or i missed this or i missed that so all these mistakes you're trying to overcome so 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 to so do that now another thing validation or anomaly so now when we are reading the volume so so matching mismatching i explained to you the concept so when we're reading the volume, we're looking for asking for validation or anomaly. So you're saying, okay, um, I, I need to confirm whether the price spike is validated by volume or is there anomaly occurring right now? There's an anomaly and I need to stay away from this trade. There's no volume in it. So price is spiking. So ask yourself, is the volume coming in if you're trying to go long or go short? So, or if your price is spiking, let's say you're planning to go long, then ask, remind yourself, is the volume coming in and the price is validated by volume, yes or no? So 
you know, like I asked my son, do you love daddy? Yes or no? So the answer come, yes. Then I ask him, how much? And then he said, too much. Then I ask him, okay, too much is what? And then the 10 million trillion billion time. So the same way, uh, remind yourself, okay, the price is spiking, volume coming in, yes or no, yes or no, validated, yes, anomaly occurring. Yes, this is an anomaly. So go, go and open the chart in a full landscape, observe full landscape, and then price and volume will tell you the truth. And if you're looking for some kind of an intraday reversal, then dissect the chart um, based on the price and see where the volume occurred, where the battle was fought. So this kind of a, uh, if you dissect your chart on a full landscape on a 30 minute or 15 minute, you will see the answer there. So here is a chart. Here is a too much chart. So so here's the here's the bar, and you see this is a uh, white bar, white candle. So assuming it's bullish candle. So this this is an average. If you draw the the average volume, this is the average volume line, and and this is the below average volume right here. So if the volume is here above average and the the bar is wide, so how you know the bar is white? Um, so you look at the open, the open and close, the difference between open and close at any given time, the last price and the open, and then compare it with the average uh, true range. So on average, this is stock moves, let's say two dollars on any given day based on the last fourteen days, and it's it's as um, trading at two dollars and fifty cents um, higher from the open. So two dollars and fifty cents, and the volume is above. So this high is spread the wide spread is being validated by the volume above average volume so something <clears throat> so the price is getting validated by the volume so wide spread and the volume is higher so the price is getting validated by the volume and the volume is getting validated by the price so it's going both ways so this is confirming that this this move is a valid move so this move is a valid move it takes a lot of effort it took a lot of effort, this volume, to um, uh, and uh, there were a lot of buyers. So, so if this is a day candle, you will dissect it into intraday charts. So 30 minute chart, 15 minute chart, and see where the price action happens. So you are coming up with your plan to uh, buy more or initiate a position if you missed it. Maybe the middle of the candle. Sometimes the middle of the candle is the candle is the price point. Somewhere in the middle is the support. So, uh, so it depends. So this is this this candle itself is alone. So you cannot make up. This is just for an example sake. So the volume is high, and this this candle could be a gap up candle. This could be a continuation. Just so what else has happened on the left side? So yesterday what happened, the day before yesterday what happened? So if it's a day chart, uh, if it's an intraday chart, then what else has happened uh, today? So, so, so it depends what kind of a time frame you're looking at. So validating or not validating and what else has happened in the previous uh, zone. So this looks like, uh, like I call it cannonball, cannonball is fired. So maybe a cannonball is fired towards the uh, China wall and the China wall is about to break and the wall is just right above the wick, right here, the wall is right here. So even though the volume is high and the cannonball is fired and uh, there's a China wall on the top, the big resistance level. So now you are you are patiently waiting uh, for the China wall to have a dent in the wall. So today a AKAM, I think AKAM did, it broke. Uh, big resistance. So AKM chart, if you look at the daily chart and draw all the trend lines and the support line, you will see a cannonball is fired uh, in a by AKM. So, so, so in other words, pay attention to what else has happened and what is happening. So the conclusion, so you draw the conclusion, so mismatch, uh, matching, so it's matching, remember I talked to you, mismatch and match to so matching, the effect is in proportion to the effort. Price move is genuine. It looks like the price move is genuine. Sometimes the move could be a climax move also. So you have to understand what else has happened before, but maybe the volume was high, the price is just hit the resistance and no more. Uh, the, it's it's going to pull back. So prices, but based on this analysis, what we saw, price is not manipulated. 
So price gets manipulated, it's not manipulated. Volume is validating the price. Market looks bullish, but be suspicious. So be suspicious is still, if, even if you are, uh, it's matching, you're being suspicious and looking for anomaly. So looking for next day, you're looking for some kind of anomaly. Is, is it what you saw is it still there? If not, then, uh, you know, then you don't take the trade. Now, here's the example of a narrow spread and low volume. So, so if the spread is narrow, so if this, let's say, open and close is closer to each other, so if the spread is narrow and the volume is below average, so this is the volume and the volume is below average, so volume validates the price. There was not no volume and the spread was narrow, so it's, it's, it's validating. So now, uh, so what are you going to do with this candle? And where this candle is forming, so ask yourself, I sh just showed you this candle. This candle may be a very bullish candle, or it could be a bearish candle. So it depends what happened What happened before this candle was formed. What happened before this candle was formed. So if so, ask yourself this question. Is this a gap up candle? Is it uh, just a continuation candle? Uh, was the trend before was a downtrend? And then it uh, it created this candle. If the trend was the downtrend, and this candle was formed, so the market uh, opened here, closed above. So market is uh, closed higher than open. Volume was low, so maybe all the sellers are gone. The sellers got absorbed right here. So there's accumulation going on. So what else will happen in this price zone if the trend was a downtrend before? So ask yourself: Is the trend before this candle was it a downtrend? If it's a downtrend and this little white candle is forming, where is forming? Is it a gap down and then it's forming? Maybe it's, a, it's a even more bullish. If a uh, trend was down and then a continuation, little gap, and then it mm, created this candle, so it's still bullish. So it depends the size of the gap before this candle, gap down, size of the gap uh, after the downtrend. If this candle is formed after an uptrend, and uh, maybe it's just resting it. So the, the the previously, let's say last two, three days, there was a lot of action and then this candle is forming and this candle is forming at the high range of the previous bars here and the volume is low. So you say, okay, this is just a resting. The market is just consolidating. And it, it if, it's, if it continues to build uh, these candles at the top range of the previous bullish bar here, then it's all bullish and uh, you're looking for a breakout. So you're looking for a breakout on the upside. So it depends what happened. Is it a gap down candle? Is it an up candle? Is it a, uh, after forming a downtrend and then it's forming? Is it is it forming after an uptrend? So what happened uh, with respect to the scandal? So all this goes into analysis and then you decide what uh, based on the volume is below average, uh, whether it's a bullish sign or a bearish sign. So now here's a candle with a wide spread and a low volume. So volume validate price. So average volume is here, the volume is low and the spread is wide. So this is the volume validates the price, but uh, wide spread on. So volume validates the price, no, wide spread, low volume. So and it, here's the anomaly here. So um, this, this candle is wide, is spread, but the volume is low. So there is an anomaly going on. So I think this is, I put it wrong here. Volume validates the price. Volume is, uh, is invalidating the price. So there's an anomaly here because the spread is widespread, but the volume is low. So this is an anomaly. So this may be a climax. This may be um, not, in, not many buyers here. So there is an anomaly here, widespread low volume. So this is, this is wrong, not validating, it's invalidating. The volume is saying that this move is is not a strong move. So there's an anomaly there. So what is happening? Something is wrong. Market makers, maybe the market makers are just uh, increasing the price and then nobody is joining. They are the one who raised the price. So they want it to move market to move higher and others are not joining. So large spread, higher volume. If there is a large spread and high volume, then there's a validation. If there's a large spread and lower volume, this is an anomaly. So that was an anomaly, I wrote it wrong. So large spread, lower volume, anomaly. So why, so ask yourself why this anomaly is occurring. You need to stay away from this kind of a market. So if you, dis, if you are long in this market, if you're long in this market, you would, 
you would exit from this market because you know you say okay the price has gone up but there's no not no follow through in the volume i need to exit from your trade and if you're not long then you would not uh uh go long you would not initiate your long position so now here there's another um, anomaly here. There's an anomaly here also. So this this is this is a low uh, a narrow narrow spread. This is a narrow spread. So open and close it shows a narrow spread. So it's narrow spread, and the volume is high. So volume is high and a narrow spread. So what is happening? So this is this is again an an, an anomaly. So large volume and if there was a large volume how come the 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 candle is small so what it means is that the, the sellers were there they were selling it so they were selling it so man let's say this no matter how much volume the price doesn't want to go up so there's somebody who is selling it into this uh, move so this means uh, you need to also sell the, there's a huge volume, but the but the volume is not validating the price, or the price is not validating the volume. So if you are in a long position, you need to exit from this long position. Or, uh, so it, I'm talking about the bullish scenario. It could be that this this candle gap down after a downtrend, and it gap down, and it gap down, and there was a lot of volume. So a lot of sellers were there and sold, but then all the selling pressure got absorbed. That's why the price closed higher. So ask yourself what else has happened? What kind of a candle is this? Is this a gap down? Is it after an uptrend? If in after an uptrend, you will exit from your long position. If it's after a downtrend, you would look, you will put this stock on your watch list to go long because this this is a let's say this is a gap down candle. It's positive and the volume was huge. So all the selling got absorbed by the buyers and the price closed to the positive in a positive direction so this tells you that you need to put this stock on your watch list to go long and stay away from short so price and volume analysis anomaly so if you if you don't pay attention to what is going on with only uh, I'm paying attention only to the price then there is a potential trap so we are getting getting uh, caught in the trap, battled by the big boys to hold the market. So, the, so, so all you know, you know about the big boys. So, it's a top of a bullish trend or a bottom of a bear, bearish trend. So, look, look. The, in other words, look for what happened before the candle is formed, where that candle is forming in a full landscape. So, so, so the 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 volume was high, but the prices were not higher. So maybe it was after an uptrend. So do look for all these kind of anomalies with the price and volume. So here are some charts of my recent trades. So here's the Apple call. I went in and then closed. When I spot this kind of candle, I said, okay, it hit, it hit the 80 resistance. I uh, would establish another position when it crosses 81. Otherwise, I'm out. Here's Airbnb. So Airbnb moved up. I close Airbnb. I think Airbnb is going higher. Yeah, after hitting 132, it pulled back to 131. So I expect Airbnb to go higher. Now here is the CME. So CME chart. So CME was entered when the market was up, uh, everything was down, but CME was moving up. CME I closed at 212. It's it now after two three days, it's it's now trading at 217. So I closed it early. So this goes in my mistake journal that I closed CME early. Here is a chart of a KO put. So when um, FC was going down, uh, so this is a breakdown. So this is a breakdown. Well, so Pepsi was going down, and then I spotted uh, Coca-Cola. So I said, okay, do I go with the Pepsi or go with the Coca-Cola? So I like Coca-Cola more than Pepsi. So I said, okay, I go short on uh, Coca-Cola puts. And the very next day when I spot this reversal, I just close the puts. Here is the oil stock HES. So uh, all oil stocks were going down. So bought the puts, HES, you name it, you know, HES. Here's the Meta. So Meta, I traded uh, two times. So I bought it where the blue arrow is around 305 and six. And then today I close at 320, 
uh, around 223 so i i um, if I look at the uh, left side, the meta is, uh, this is a resistance, 323 to 325, but I believe the meta is going much higher towards 370, 375. So, so but I close my position today and I look for the entry after I either see the pullback or a break. I, I believe meta is going for 375. Here's the OXY puts breakdown. Close this one, a large volume to large volume, um, close it. PSX, again, a simple, another oil trade, went, long, went short on this and then on the gap down, close, puts for 55 years. Exxon, same, after uh, multiple gap down. Here's the gap down and then another one, and then I close it when the when this starts to close higher, close the puts position, so 87% gain. So. So this is this concludes the price and volume analysis and i will continue to talk to you next week maybe on monday or sunday all right thank you so i'll see you next time maybe on sunday